Welcome back to Hooton Park. It's going to be a fabulous race here for the IndyCar Cadets and the Daniel Ricciardo Series final. This is a split class again, two different categories of kart. In the DRS, it's going to be Oscar Walsh and Connor Scarisbrick from Joe Wood and Bailey Wolf. In the IndyCar Cadets, we'll see Max Tomkinson and James Norman, John Willett and Rory Pierce from Vespa Farah, Albie Atmore and Zach Stewart. Definitely going to be an interesting one. And of course, it'll be a rolling start for this one. So let's see how the competitors can do as we get ourselves underway. It's going to be a very exciting battle in these two classes. The DRS drivers making their way through. We're going to see a good start from these boys as they come up to the line. And away we go racing. It's going to be a tough start right from the get-go from Connor Scarisbrick. Trying to hold off around the outside. A big lunge from Oscar Walsh trying to get through. Almost managed to go right around the outside in the first hairpin. And managed to get himself into the lead of the race there. But just had to bail out. Here we go for the second start. This is the IndyCart Cadets. No problems at all off the line there for Max Tomkinson in front of James Norman. They get through the first couple of apexes and down the back straight already. A nice move. And up into third position, neatly taken. John Willett just keeping it nice and tidy as they come through. But no major concerns. Again, the driver's being very sensible on the opening lap. Very well aware of the fact that this is the kind of race where you can chuck it away on the opening lap and then have no point of recovery. But Scarisbrick leads the way here after an excellent start. Oscar Walsh, second position, hustling him down already. This is a great little battle between these two. Back to the IndyCart cadets. Max Tomkinson running in front of James Norman. John Willett is still there on the 50 in third position. Is Pierce still in position? Yes, he is. So uh, good run so far from Rory Pierce. And then we have Vespa Farah, the 73. There is Vespa charging through, doing an excellent job. She is there in position as they continue to run through. But the battle is very, very tight indeed at the front end of the field. Max Tomkinson and James Norman out in the front end of the field. And here are the DRS twins up at the front end of the field. Scarisbrick and Walsh. There is not much to choose between these two. They were 58 points apiece from their qualification heats. So this race really is going to have to settle this battle once and for all. It's going to be a tight battle. Don't forget, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. You won't miss a race from the TDI Media channel. Very interesting start to proceedings for the DRS boys though. Wood is there in third place, Wolf in fourth. Here's Max Tomkinson, he leads the IndyCar Cadet class and he's actually starting to stretch away a little bit now from James Norman on the 66. That is definite daylight between the two. Yeah, definitely got more pace as uh, Max Tomkinson there. Connor Scarisbrick on the DRS with the fastest lap at 42.648 currently. But uh, that could switch back and forth between Scarisbrick and Walsh. This is the battle for third and fourth in the DRS class. That's a Wolf, or Wood rather, followed by Wolf. Wolf has just set the fastest lap, Oscar Walsh, 42.426. So he's getting closer to Scarisbrick out front, as you can see. This is very interesting as he now starts to break that deadlock. Here is Pierce in front of Vespa Farah. Tell you what, the Farahs really have got it in stereo, haven't they? With four drivers in the family, all racing drivers. There aren't many families that have that many competitors out on the field I have to say Vespa going for it and carrying our 360 degree onboard camera today as well as she charges after Pierce but uh, there are a few racing families that just can't get enough of it I know of course of um, uh, Khaled al Kubaisi, his two daughters Amna and Hamda they both race and the uh, Fluchers well there's three great racers within that field there's Lorenzo who's now in F4 Lucas Flusher, I think, is in uh, the OK Junior scene still. And Luna Flusher just became the first woman to win in the Ayami Euro Series. So there are some families that have definitely got it in stereo. Here's Vespa chasing down Rory Pierce, hoping to try and move up into the top. Oh, just a quick dab of the brakes. Oh. And Vespa hits hers to react. That was so easy a mistake to make. Look, well, just catching the curb. The curb. That's hit it. The curb spun him round. And Vespa has been watching the Olympics, Jake. And she's decided she's coming up with a new class for the Olympics. It's synchronized <laughs> spinning. And that is so easy to do as well when you're pushing the limits. There is the man in third position. That is Bailey Wolf, having managed to get past Wood. So Joe Wood is trying his best to get back into position to try and take that third place back. Vespa Farah there has managed to recover quite quickly, but is not far away from being caught by Scarisbrick and Walsh. Walsh actually has the fastest lap of the race at the moment. There's not much to choose between these two, and they've been absolutely locked together, all meeting here at Hooton Park. This race is definitely going to separate them, but it's a basically it's a case of whoever blinks first, essentially. Looks like we've had a problem with Zach Stewart. He appears to be out of the race, unfortunately. Trying to get past Vespa Farah could be the thing that makes the moment in this race come to play as Connor Scarisbrick makes his bid. 
but there's not a massive ease to get through. Oh, and that's very brave from Walsh. He knew that he had to get past pretty quickly, but that was threading the needle with the smallest gap in history. Yeah, absolutely. He got by though, but only just, only just. This is a battle for the DRS third and fourth. Again, as you were, that's a wolf followed by Wood. Well, that took a heck of a lot of bravery from both Vespa Farah and Oscar Walsh, actually, because Vespa had to make sure there was enough space on the inside to leave for Oscar Walsh when she was already committed to the apex herself. And for Walsh, he basically had to trust that Vespa Farah wasn't going to turn further across the apex to take her natural racing line. So that was very bold and very brave from both drivers. Here is the battle for third position. This is Wolf versus Wood as they continue to battle away. And is this going to be a chance down the main straight now for Joe Wood? He's really seriously thinking about it, pushing, pushing Bailey Wolf, desperately trying to get Bailey to make the mistake. A lot of motivation from the sidelines as well. Don't forget it's IndyCart, so you can have a mechanic placed in the middle of the circuit for a little bit of uh, encouragement and motivation. Well, you're not supposed to be encouraging no, anybody. No, you're, you're not supposed to be there just to help people if they spin off. But uh, uh, we know what happens. We've got people out there with phones checking the timing and I mean, so on and so forth. You've got a parent out there. They're willing. They can't just. They can't resist it, can they? Come on, come on. There's always going to be that little bit of emotion that creeps in. This is such an interesting battle between these two, still squabbling away for third position. Wolf and Wood really giving it a hammer and tongs battle here, and Joe Wood is pressuring Bailey Wolf to make the first mistake, but Bailey is keeping it nice and controlled through turn one. This is not an easy circuit to get right. It's one of the shortest in the British karting calendar, but it's very easy to get it wrong. It's very, very abrasive in parts of the course. You've got to be quite technical and very, very strategic as to where you place the car. You can't ride the curbs here because they will spit you off as we've already seen a couple of times. And you've got to be very respectful of where to place the cart in the apex. Yeah, short circuit, Jake, but uh, not as short as Clay Pigeon, apparently, and not tight and twisty. No, that's a very good point. Definitely not tight and twisty. Yeah, definitely not. That's a very good point. So the battle continues on its way. I was, I was asked to make the point that I see. it's not tight and twisted. I see. So well, there you go. Here is the move on the inside, is it? No, not quite. Bailey Wolf still able to hold on to that third position as Oscar Walsh bangs in a 42-3-4 for the new fastest lap of the race to get a little bit closer to Connor Scarra's brick again. But still, Joe Wood is trying every trick in the book here, keeping it nice and respectful, but still pressuring, still trying to edge a mistake. Tomkinson well clear now from the 66 of James Norman. But Connor versus Oscar continues to rumble on as Scaris, Brick and Walsh are still trading sector times. There's only half a second between them. If any one of them blinks, the other one is going to have this on a silver platter. Yeah, the two real battles on the track. You've got this one. This is for third and fourth. And you've got the one we've just been looking at for first and second, all on DRS carts. And uh, they are pretty much the only battles on the track that we're following at the moment. It's, it's a battle for third and fourth. It is indeed. It's a fabulous category, the Daniel Ricciardo series. You have to give it full credence. There's uh, three different categories for cadet, for junior, for senior. And uh, they're named the Daniel Ricciardo series, of course, after the Australian uh, F1 driver. The uh, chassis that is part of the Birrell Art Group. Final lap begins, as the board shows there. And uh, these youngsters, they have no teams. They just turn up with the chassis, one mechanic, and they go racing. It's absolutely no politics, no money. Just go and enjoy the motor racing. It's a fabulous idea, brilliant concept. Came out of the uh, Easy Cart branding, of course, out in Italy, and then evolved into Birrell Art UK. And now it's the Daniel Ricciardo series. It's got some amazing talent and some brilliant young competitors in it. And these young lads are showcasing that. Look at the way Connor Scarisbrick has just checked out in the last couple of laps. 42-27 from Connor Scarisbrick. He wants this win and he's been biding his time and now has just bit the bullet in the closing couple of laps. An excellent victory for Connor Scarisbrick. He finally gets the win. Oscar Walsh in second place there. And they're going to come home in front of John Willett, who has been lapped, and he will be third in the IndyCar Cadets race. Here is the battle further back. Now, this is an interesting uh, turn of events. Max Tomkinson has managed to get in amongst the two DRS racers so that he could actually split them as we come home for Rory Pierce. Uh, Vespa Farah is now behind Alfie Atmore at the line. And how about that for Max Tomkinson? He's actually beaten the two DRS carts home for an overall third place as the winner of the IndyCart Cadets.
So Scaris Brick is 1.9 clear of Oscar Walsh. Max Tomkinson just beats Bailey Wolf and Joe Wood over the line. James Norman from John Willett, Rory Pierce, Alfie Atmore, and Vesper Farrow. Great racing from two different classes. A great battle between Scaris Brick and Walsh. More coming up in part three here at Hooton Park.